We have no clue what the very beginning of our universe was like, nor the conditions from which it arose, nor that our universe even had a beginning. The best explanation for a natural beginning to our universe, the combined might of science can muster, is a mysterious singularity that came from an unknown somewhere or something, but by alternative estimations, perhaps nowhere and nothing at all. This theoretical singularity, or what's also been called a phase, was hot and dense, akin to a primordial stew frothing about as an unstable form of energy. Energy whose nature is, you guessed it, not yet known. Boom. A Big Bang event, which is impossible to describe or prove, occurs and leads to, via a sequence of events unknown to man, the triggering of cosmic inflation, which then, one way or another, smoothed and straightened out our universe in such a manner as to produce the observed homogeneity of causally disconnected regions of space. Following this alleged Big Bang, as the universe expanded and cooled, the primordial energy comprising that aforementioned singularity experienced a transformation into the fundamental particles from which arose all the matter we observe today. Yes, that includes you. That's the best story we got. And you may have noticed there are a few holes in it. For starters, whether the Big Bang event in question resulted from a singularity or merely embodies a condensed transitional phase stemming from some sort of multiverse event or cyclic episode. Longtime critics of the singularity have pointed out, while it's unknown fundamental nature is probably its greatest shortcoming. Just because the universe is expanding doesn't mean a Big Bang triggered the expansion process, nor again that our universe even had a beginning. They also note any theory capable of describing such a Big Bang event from said singularity would require the unification of quantum physics and general relativity, two foundational pillars of modern physics which are, so far as we know, fundamentally incompatible. What may be the greatest proponent of a condensed transitional phase having existed is cosmic inflation, which after the chaotic Big Bang event is theorized to have been a period of exponential expansion for our universe. This expansion is credited as the reason our universe is smooth and flat and boasts homogeneous features across causally disconnected regions of space, which at some point must have shared the influence of some mechanism that set the same initial conditions everywhere. The pioneer of inflationary theory, Alan Guth, admits it's hard to build models of inflation that don't lead to a multiverse. He reckons an understanding of the infinite tree of universes seems to be needed in order to make statistical predictions about the properties of our own universe. Nobel Prize winning physicist Sir Roger Penrose, who favors a cyclical model of the universe, never believed in inflationary theory. He openly questions, why does it work in one direction but not the other, given the existence of crazy singularities and black holes, which are not automatically smoothed out by time-reversed inflation. There are plenty of physicists who share Penrose's skeptical sentiment over inflationary theory and suggest our universe undergoes an endless sequence of cosmological epochs, each starting with a bang and ending with a crunch what collectively could be called a bounce. Instead of having an inflationary epoch, each cycle includes a period of slow accelerated expansion followed by slow contraction. The combination should be able to produce the homogeneity, flatness, density fluctuations, and energy needed to begin the next cycle. 
Paul Steinhardt, who helped pioneer cosmic inflation alongside Alan Guth, takes the cyclical universe model one step further, arguing you don't have to have space shrink to zero to have a cyclic universe. In other words, the space surrounding our endlessly reincarnating universe may indeed go on infinitely. In such a case, we can imagine, for instance, our observable universe shrinking and expanding whilst the space around it is affected in a limited manner. During a panel discussion moderated by Brian Greene, Steinhardt revealed a flaw in the source of the information we are using to reach the conclusion that the expansion of our universe is accelerating. He noted that we are measuring the expansion rate of our universe based on supernovae that were exploding in much earlier times at very large distances and hence emitted their light long ago. It may be the case there is no relevant information telling us exactly what's happening right now. We could already be well on our way to the end of acceleration and the start of contraction and we wouldn't even know it. Interestingly, this year, NASA reported that the James Webb Space Telescope spotted the most distant early galaxy in the known universe. The discovery of this galaxy, along with others like it, challenges the current Big Bang model. As these galaxies appear to be much more massive and mature than they should have been at the time they are being recorded, apparently they formed earlier and faster than previously thought. Recent research also suggests our universe has a net angular momentum to it, meaning all of its contents may be spinning in the same direction, like water circling a drain. A study of several hundred spiral galaxies found two-thirds, or a majority of them, are spinning in the opposite direction as our Milky Way. These findings in particular have spurred speculation in the scientific community that our universe could be inside a black hole, which absolutely shatters the idea space and time are a result of the Big Bang and that the Big Bang represents the creation of all things. Responding to the news, Neil deGrasse Tyson pondered, if there is a net angular momentum to the universe, where did it come from? It's not obvious that would come from a Big Bang, which is an explosion in all directions, statistically evenly. Supporters of the most up-to-date version of the Big Bang theory cite the cosmic microwave background, or CMB, as evidence that roughly 375,000 years into the existence of our universe, all of its contents must have been contracted. And that's how, independent of any star, galaxy, or other object, what they would describe as heat leftovers from the Big Bang permeate with an even distribution the whole of our observable universe. But Remember those ancient galaxies the James Webb Space Telescope is picking up? Well, in light of those discoveries, a study published this year describes massive galaxy formation in the early universe as a non-negligible source of CMB foreground contamination that may account for the full present-day CMB energy density. Regardless of whether this particular paper is correct, the point remains, we have a situation where the roughly evenly distributed cosmic microwave background radiation is fact, while how it got there is not fully understood. Nonetheless, a general consensus amongst physicists persists, which goes the CMB supports the concept of a period of rapid cosmic inflation that served as a hypothetical bridge from the Big Bang's primeval singularity to the CMB's appearance. But if, and it's currently a big if, the even distribution of the cosmic microwave background's radiation could be demonstrated to have developed by another means, this wouldn't totally destroy, but would deal a substantial blow to the current Big Bang model's credibility. As one of its foundational pillars, 
cosmic inflation would be severely undermined. Truth be told, the Big Bang Theory isn't really the theory of a bang at all. It's more like a theory of the aftermath of a supposed bang. Not only that, the term gets used with a variety of meanings. In one sense, the Big Bang event itself, and in another, has a general reference to the evolutionary development of our universe, which encompasses literally everything that ever happened. I think, though, however somebody chooses to define the Big Bang Theory, while it is a testament to the advancement of human intelligence, it is incomplete at best, and possibly even wrong at worst. The fate of this theory doesn't make much of a difference to me personally. All that matters is, in good faith, we continue our search for the truth. Alrighty everybody, that's gonna do it for today's video on why the Big Bang Theory is falling apart. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the origin of our universe. Was it a singularity? Did it come from a multiverse event? Or are we all just floating around inside a black hole, so who cares anyways? Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.